Hello, this is Cycle 2, Week 14 Science Experiment 171 Pepper Run in Van Cleve's book. This is a really cool uh, demonstration. I know you're going to like it, and I know your students uh, are going to like it. Uh, we'll talk about what happens here in just a second, but let's jump right in uh, and, and look at the actual demonstration. Uh, you will need a bowl of water. This is just tap water. Tap water works, uh, works very well, probably best for an experiment like this. So I start with um, the bowl of water. We're going to add pepper to um, the water. It doesn't have to be fresh ground pepper. This is just what I have easy access to, but any kind of pepper will work. So I'm going to put some pepper in. I'm going to put a fair amount. I want to fairly well cover the surface of the water uh, with the pepper, like that. And then I'm going to now take a toothpick and I'm going to take uh, our magical substance here. Uh, hiding in this cup. So I'm going to dip the toothpick in. I'm going to immerse the whole toothpick, get just a little bit on the edge of the toothpick, and I'm going to dip the end of the toothpick into the water. Watch. I can do it again. Not quite as much of an effect uh, the second time. But the pepper clearly moved away. What is going on? What is happening? Um, this magical substance here uh, in, inside uh, the cup is uh, Dawn liquid detergent. This is just soap uh, that we were able to put in, and that becomes, that's an important clue, uh, I think, uh, as to what is happening. So, so what is going on here? So we have the water, and then we have the pepper um, sitting on top. The, the water that uh, is so much of our planet really is a wonderful and unique substance. It, it was put here by design so that life as we know it and understand it could exist. One of the important properties of, of water is, is that, um, uh, is that it, it has small little um, what we call dipoles within the molecule it, it itself. Uh, if we write out the chemical formula for water, we write H2O, right? Two, two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. If we break it out and show in three dimensions, I mean, this is on a flat piece of paper, but if we show the structure, there's a little bit of an angle between, um, it's almost like a, a triangle with the hydrogen um, and the oxygen um, as shown. And so in its liquid state, then the water molecules uh, are, are everywhere. They're all in this bowl. And then on, on the surface of the air, the water molecules are interacting with each other and with the surface of the air on the edges of the bowl itself, they're interacting with the, the bowl um, and, and one another. But, but in this structure then, we have a little bit of positive charge on each hydrogen and a little bit of negative charge on each oxygen. And so what that means then is when a molecule of water comes like this, this is slightly positively charged, this is slightly negatively charged, there's a little bit of an interaction, right? Because opposites attract between the negative and the positive charges. Um, and so all of that's going on um, inside, inside this bowl. And then to that system, we then introduce the pepper. Right? Now, um, the pepper is a much more complicated uh, molecule, but the pepper has elements of, in it as well that are slightly positive and slightly negatively charged. And so when I first put the pepper onto the surface, I, you know, I can spread it around uniformly on the surface, but the, but the pepper molecules, each individual pepper molecule then has all of these different water molecules, these what we call in chemistry these dipole moments, this positive and negative dipole, they're all pulling on them. And so and some of them sink pretty quickly to the bottom, but a lot of them will stay very, very near the surface or on the surface of the water. And a lot of them, then they've got all these different um, things pulling on them. It's, it's, it's a little bit like one magnet sitting in a sea of other magnets. And so all of these magnets are pulling on each other and the system has an equilibrium. So then what do we do? We change it, right? We change the equilibrium. We add the soap. Now the soap, is is a, is a, a even more complicated molecule, and and the soap is so unique because it has a part of it that um, is, is very miscible with the water, it, it interacts very well with the water, and a part of the soap molecule that doesn't at all. And so when we put the when the soap is made, then uh, the parts that are water miscible or soluble are on the outside, the hydrophilic parts and the inner core is hydrophobic and they're all bunched together and that's that's essential to how the soap actually works in terms of cleaning and removing dirt but what's happening here is I, I now have this 
this very polar environment. I've got the, the polar water, I've got the, the pepper that's suspended, all these little dipoles are pulling on all these pepper things, it's, everything's at equilibrium. And now I introduce this, this dish detergent, I introduce the soap, and suddenly now, part of that soap is uh, is hydrophilic, but a part of it's very hydrophobic. And so as it goes into the water in the middle, then what happens effectively is the water molecules have to rearrange in that localized area because I've now added this, this soap directly to it. And so as I add this soap to it, the soap itself is quickly forming these, these micelles uh, and the water itself is changing. And we see that because as the water molecules move, as they rearrange to form a new energetically stable state, suddenly the pepper moves. Because the little dipoles, the little, the little water magnets, for lack of a better description, were, were here, and now suddenly they've all changed. And so in that one little area, so around, again, around each pepper, you have all of these little water molecules. Well, if that's where the, the tip of that, um, of that toothpick touches the water, we now introduce the soap here, and that's what causes this local change. So suddenly that pepper no longer has everything pulling on it in one area. Let's just imagine here, that's where the, the tip is. Now suddenly those water molecules are moving. And so what happens, that pepper immediately moves as well. And that's what you vis visibly can see. So I think this is really cool. This is a lot of fun. Um, after each time you do it, it gets a little harder to replicate. But we can try one more time. Oh. <laughs> you can see that. If we go all the way out here, let's try. It won't work, it won't work as well. So. As you, as you do this experiment with multiple kids, you will need either, depending on your physical setup, you'll need to be able to replenish the water and replenish the, the, the pepper in particular. I think a couple of containers of the soap will work very well. I wouldn't let the soap sit out overnight. It will oxidize sitting, the surface of it will oxidize sitting in the air. Uh, it, definitely the fresher the soap is, the better. The, the more dramatic, but it's essential that you have fresh water and fresh pepper for each student who does it for that first time. Um, as we just were able to demonstrate. So either back and forth to a bathroom or, or um, multiple bowls with a big, you know, with a big container of water that, that you can uh, replenish will we'll make it work. This is a very cool experiment. The kids, I think, can all do this. They will all enjoy doing it. It gives us an opportunity to talk about um, how amazing the, the properties of the water are. And that's just one property of water uh, that we're actually talking about here. Um, and, and demonstrating here, but it's an important one, and I, and I think that it's that it's one um, the kids can understand, and they can definitely understand what they're seeing, um, and that's what science really is all about. This is Cycle Two, Week Fourteen Science Experiment One Seventy One, Pepper Run.